Hello, my name is Hunter Wilson, and this is how I simulated a shock inside of a 2D nozzle. This was a 80% Bell nozzle CD nozzle configuration. In my workbench, I began with a fluent simulation, and I went ahead and completed the geometry, mesh, and setup. So I'll go through that real quick. Here's my geometry of the 80% Bell nozzle is the same one used from project one. You can see the radius of the nozzle here is 0.485 millimeters, and it was converted into meters inside of Fluent. So from here, we have our geometry, and then we can go to our mesh. Here is our mesh. I started by generating a simple mesh and then refined it. I used adaptive sizing, and increase the resolution as much as possible. I also used medium smoothing in the quality, inserted a face meshing in order to make it more symmetrical, and refined it three times, which gave me total element count of 32,256. In here you can see I also assigned geometry of the nozzle in order to put it into Fluent, to run our analysis. So now we can go to Fluent and the setup. In here, you'll look on this left side, and we turned our energy on and made our viscosity inviscid for our simulation. Since we were working with air, we used air as an ideal gas. From here, we can go to our boundary conditions that we assigned in the mesh at our inlet. Pressure inlet, we used the given values, and this initial gauge pressure was calculated using interpolation. Here, our total temperature is 3,710 Kelvin. Now, in order to generate a shock inside the nozzle, we had to change our back pressure since our stagnation pressure was constant. I used a back pressure of 6 million pascal and increased my back temperature to 3561.625 Kelvin. This was calculated using theoretical values. So once we applied these, we can then go down to our initialization. I used a hybrid initialization then you can run your calculation in which mine converged in a thousand iterations. So we can go down to our contours that are already completed. And you can see here from the pressure contour that there is a clear shock towards the beginning of the diverging section of the nozzle. You can check our temperature. You can still see the shock in the same spot. Our density, our velocity, which makes sense because the shock is fast in the uh, before the shock and after the speed will decrease, as seen here. Here is the Mach number, which again is very similar to the velocity. It's a function, since the Mach number is a function of velocity and the speed of sound. The speed of sound, as you can see, also follows a similar pattern. It's increasing after the shock, but decreased in the high velocity sections. And below, here are my plots of the data. Here's my pressure, which again, you can see exactly where the shock takes place inside of the nozzle at about just before point at about 0.28 meters down the length of the nozzle is our shock location. Here's my temperature plot, density plot, velocity, Mach number and speed of sound. This was actually very fun 
to do. And I definitely think these contours are very nice look to look at and make a bunch of sense. If we wanted to do any more, we could potentially refine our mesh to get an even more accurate solution inside of the nozzle. Thank you for watching.